These three boxes contain the H.J. Zane Mercantile Kit for Microscale Models. This was released in 1994. I don't know how many were made, but this is number 379. I don't know much about the company, but Don Reed is the man behind Microscale Models, and apparently he was a builder. So one of the things that he did that was kind of unique was he made all of his kits uh, in correct proportion to actual buildings. Uh, a lot of HO scale or model railroad buildings will be kind of shrunk down in size uh, so that they have the appearance of being a large building but are uh, smaller in footprint. He didn't do that. He kept everything the same proportion. At least that is my understanding. So what I know about this kit is that it's mostly plaster and wood. I don't think there's any cast metal parts. So we have a couple just photographs of the final product as he built it. We have a bag of plaster accessories. So here we have a plaster base. My understanding of this kit is that it can be built entirely on this base and so it's basically a diorama, like a self-contained diorama. The first thing I did is spray all of the plaster pieces with a gray enamel spray paint. Uh, and this just doesn't have to be a heavy coat, you just want to give it, you know, like 80 or 90 percent at least. And the reason that you do this is to prevent the acrylic paint from soaking into the plaster. So it creates kind of a barrier for the acrylic paint to stick to. This is the roofing material for the awnings. And it looks like they give you uh, twice as much as you need. Uh, it's from a company called Builders in Scale, and apparently it's still available. Their website is still up, so I will put a link in the description. For the main building walls, I had to do a lot of playing around to come up with a, a look that I liked. So this is it in progress. The first thing I did was I sprayed it with an airbrush with a light gray color, and I didn't really like the way that color looked. So I have painted it white with a brush, and obviously there's a lot of brush strokes, so I'm going to take care of that. This is Americana Sand Gray and the same white color that I used, which is Wicker White. And I'm going to apply both of them with a sponge. And I found that using a sponge kind of gives a little bit of a paint texture. It kind of helps the, the general look of the, of the wall and it's going to cover up the brush strokes.
the first steps in the assembly is to put the railing onto these steps and you cut the railing from wire he provides you with some wire and then you drill holes in the steps these are plaster steps you drill holes and put the stands in and then you're supposed to glue this top piece onto the stands and of course the challenging part is getting the stands all to the correct length and lining up exactly to hit the top piece so what I did is I just first glued the top piece to the first and last post and then I'm going to come through and try and attach each of the individual posts and we'll see if that works At this point there are a couple sections of wall to be glued together and I'm using 5 minute epoxy for that which is pretty good but it's not great for gluing plaster. Uh, you'll still be able to break it apart if you need to. But the pieces fit together really well. It only took a little tiny bit of sanding to get a really solid looking seam here. So I'm doing this on parchment paper so that if I glue the walls to the parchment paper it's not really a big deal. When I first had tried this I, didn't, I was hoping that uh, epoxy did not stick to parchment paper, but it actually does. I had glued this piece of plastic over the seam on the these where these two walls are joined and I used five minute epoxy and it interfered with these floor supports and so I was able to just pull it off so obviously five minute epoxy doesn't work very well so I re-glued it using the super glue gel and that's also how I glued in these floor supports these are my windows and I sprayed them with uh, Tamiya primer and then airbrushed them with uh, really two shades of brown one would have been good enough but I kind of made a mistake and just left it uh, so now I'm going to try a somewhat different paint technique. I have green here which is going to be like the main color of the trim and I'm going to put it on in a kind of a fairly heavy wash and see how that looks. So the idea is I don't really want full coverage. I want some of the, the brown to show through. I think I have figured out the puzzle as to how the building goes together. This is the only piece really that was broken and I think it was broken intentionally to fit into the box. But it goes together like this and this is the front of the building and this is the deck that is covered. And then this wall piece goes in here and he emphasizes that this is the most important part of the assembly. You have to get this right or the other pieces won't fit. So I sanded off some of the primer so that I'm gluing plaster to plaster because that gives a stronger grip. If you glue paint to paint then the paint is 
the weak point in the joint. So I'm using five minute epoxy. This is the uh, lower level under the drive area, I guess. I'm not sure what to call that. And it goes in like this. And the next step is to glue this wall into place. It appears that I got this assembled correctly and everything is square. So my next thing is I'm going to attach this. And I have a wood support that goes underneath it. And I also have a wood support holding up this dock area. This is the uh, main building uh, completed with the assembly. I filled this crack with some of this uh, spackling compound. On the inside, on the corners, I reinforced the corners with some plastic L-beams and I glued them in using Gorilla Glue because uh, I kind of like to make sure I use two different types of glue on plaster buildings just in case one doesn't work out that well. And the reinforcement is a good spot to use Gorilla Glue, which is pretty strong. On the underside, I put in some reinforcements as well. I don't think I need to add the supports in. So at this point, I need to do a lot of touch-up painting, and I almost feel like I need to repaint a lot of the building. So I think I'm going to repaint this, and, and then the walls are, are kind of a mess. Overall, these pieces were a really good fit. The only thing that didn't really fit is just this one area. This deck comes up a little bit above this uh, stone wall. After filling all the gaps in the walls, I basically had to repaint the whole building. So this is where I am. The next step is going to be weathering powders. Here is the building after I have applied weathering powders and sprayed it with uh, Tamiya Flat Clear to seal the weathering powders and I applied the windows and the shutters. Putting the windows and shutters in was a pretty tedious task, uh, probably the most tedious of the build. On some of the windows I put in curtains. Uh, I've done that on other builds. I just print pictures of curtains from the internet and uh, paste them over the windows. And in this case it looks a little bit weird because the walls are about a quarter inch thick so the curtains kind of sit behind the window by an uh, unrealistic amount, but I don't think it's that noticeable. Uh, awning on the front of the building didn't go on as well as I would have liked uh, so I got a lot of glue spots I got to fix so the usually the first thing I go to is this testers doll coat and this is a lacquer so rather than dig up lacquer thinner I usually just use an old brush and throw it away afterwards so we'll see if this fixes the problem On the back, the problem is that the holes were pretty poorly aligned from the roof to the wall. Um, so this is the worst one. I don't know, I might fix that, I might not.
I finished assembling the wood part of the structures and I put in the windows and the shutters and the uh, wall paint turned out to be a little more blue than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be more green but I can't change it now. Uh, so I need to add the trim to the wood parts and they give you this L-shaped uh, corner trim uh, made out of wood which I've never seen before so it goes on here that way. So that's kind of convenient. So I painted the trim with uh, brown and then I applied the green trim color with a sponge. This is my lighting assembly and this is my first time trying to light a building and we'll see how it goes. So these diodes I got on uh, Amazon. Um, so you search for LED diode, which I know is repetitive, but uh, if you search just for LED then you get a bunch of light bulbs. Um, so these things come in a pack and they're pretty cheap and these are the uh, like warm white light and then I also got some red ones just for fun and the wire is really thin so it makes it kind of hard to work with but to get the stripping off to get the insulation off I really just was using my fingernail because everything else just destroyed the wire so that's kind of the hardest part of dealing with these yeah. That's about as good as I can do. So then I got these off Amazon too, this battery connector. And uh, the terminal connector also from uh, Amazon. And it doesn't work real well yet. I might have to do some soldering. I was trying to avoid soldering. So I thought that the way that these worked was you would connect the power on one side, positive and negative, and then that whole side would be positive, or the whole side would, you know, the whole side would be negative, and then you could wire up different LEDs. But they connect crosswise, which doesn't really make any sense to me as to you know, what advantage that is. So I got to do some digging around, maybe find a better type of terminal. So part of the experiment here is just to see what kind of problems I have in terms of like light leakage, how much light I need. Uh, light leakage being like coming out of like any kind of gaps in the floors or whatever. And these diodes happen to be 12 volt. Uh, so a 9 volt battery is sufficient to light them up, but it could go up to 12 volts uh, with a different battery pack. So we'll see how this goes. I got all the shingle material on my roof pieces and the roofing came in these rolls. I've never used rolls like this. This was the first time. And they gave me two rolls and I think I did the whole set of roofs with uh, just one roll. So it was nice to have extra. 
So these rolls were uh, a little more difficult than the sheets to put on, but I think they look better. They have sort of a natural distressed look with the shingles kind of sticking up. To install them, I sprayed the wood pieces with just spray adhesive and then rolled them out. So the big ones took about 10 minutes. The little ones took uh, a few minutes. And then I trimmed off the excess with a razor blade. So hopefully I can put the roof pieces on and put the building together with all the shingles on. I wasn't exactly sure from the instructions what the uh, order was supposed to be. So I had a significant problem with the roofing panels. All of the shingles came off the panels uh, and I was on every panel. And it happened when I sprayed them with uh, the primer. So the gray is the primer. I got this part of the building attached and I'm test fitting the roof piece. I wired the LEDs into this part of the building and I ran the wires down through the floor and out the bottom. It gives you these wooden floor panels and so I've uh, attached LEDs to these so I have one LED on the bottom which will light the main floor and then I have two LEDs on the top which will light the upper floor, I guess the second floor and so I will just stick the floor panel in here like this and then run the wires through the, the first floor and out the bottom And another thing I have is I'm going to have a piece of black cardboard that covers there to, present any, to prevent any leakage coming up to the top and possibly out the roof. I have this part of the roof attached and for this building there's one light bulb up in the top and the wire goes through into here and out the bottom. So I think I can attach this building now. Most of the assembly is done. I'm just adding in some details and then I'm going to have to do a lot of touch-up painting because it really looks like a bit of a mess. One of the oddities of this building is that here you have three doors that just open up into nowhere. Uh, in the instructions you're supposed to put uh, a pulley up at the top so the idea is you lift loads up and bring them in through the doors. He gives you uh, two of these cranes but they're supposed to mount on the concrete pavement and this is how the building fits on the concrete slab there's a little loading dock here that gets mounted up on some posts I didn't really like any of the signs so I added a coca-cola decal from Dave's decals here's one of the retaining walls and it is supposed to go in here like this so it does not fit over the uh, concrete slab and then the second retaining wall goes in behind the stairs. You can't really see that, but it also extends off the concrete slab. And then in the front of the building, 
the front overhangs the concrete slab. So here you can see the front. This retaining wall goes over here. And there's a set of steps that goes here. And then I ha still have to add the dormers. So these are the cast plaster dormers and they will go up here. And uh, I'm painting the roofing for that. One of the problems with my build is I did not really pay a lot of attention to the interior of the building, even though I was going to light it. So when you look in this front window, you can see wires sitting inside the building. So I'm going to have to do something to cover those up. Uh, I could use signs. I also thought about uh, actually just spraying the windows with testers doll coat so that they fog up. So I'm going to give some thought to that. This is a set of signs that came with the kit. So I scanned it into the computer. And before you scan something like this, it's a good idea to put uh, little marks that indicate one inch so that when you uh, go to reprint, you know what size to print at. So I scanned them into the computer and then I pasted the image into a Word document with a couple different sizes and I printed it out. And then I uh, covered this uh, paper with uh, weathering powders and sprayed it with an acrylic sealer. So I'm going to cut out some of these and I'm going to try to use those possibly to cover up the wires that you can see in the front window. I did a lot of touch-up painting and I think it really helped the model. Uh, so I covered it with some weathering powders uh, that usually fixes a lot of mistakes. Uh, but another thing that I did was I gave it a very light overspray of a dark olive color with an airbrush. And that kind of toned everything down and brought all the colors together. To uh, weather the concrete, I used a combination of Vallejo Brown engine soot and Vallejo Brown wash. And I know it sounds kind of weird to use engine soot, but it, it does a nice job of coloring up the concrete. For the lights, I took all the leads and I soldered them all together down to just two leads, uh, a positive and a negative, and then attached them to this battery connector. There was a lot of light leakage, so if you're going to light up the interior, you have to be really careful to uh, really seal off any floors or rooms that uh, aren't going to be lit. And also, you can really see the inside of the building, which in this case is empty. So if you're going to light a building, it seems like a good idea to actually put something inside that's, that's visible. I, I really didn't pay any attention to uh, what the inside of the building was going to look like other than having the floors uh, in place. So for future lighting, uh, I'm going to have to pay more attention to that.